Hello again. This is Doug at the Workshop of Wood Spun Round. It is so good to have you back in the shop with me today. Today we're turning a lidded box for hashtag week lidded box. Or hashtag lidded box week, I guess is how we should say it. Uh, Steve Carvel at SK Craft set the stage and laid the bar out for us. And a uh, high bar indeed, as he did his. He did a great job. Others have been submitted and they have... Uh, there have been some great boxes already submitted. We got a couple weeks yet, but I wanted to go ahead and get mine in. Uh, went into the shop and found this piece of spalted maple. It was a piece that's been laying around for a while. And so I just thought I wanted to uh, go ahead and turn this, make a box out of it. And what you see here, it's on the lathe. It was already round, uh, somewhat cylindrical. And I just mounted it on the lathe, made sure it was nice and round. And what we're doing here is simply uh, Cutting a tenon. I'm going to put a tenon on both ends. That way I can I can cut the lid off of the box, work on the box, work on the lid independently, and at the end we'll put them together and then have the finished product come out at the end. I'm just cleaning up the very ends here, making sure there's nothing uh, sticking out where it'll get in the way, cause the uh, tenon to bottom out in the chuck. With the last video and this one, I'm doing a bit of an experiment, doing some voiceover. Uh, let me know, if you would, in the comments what you think about it. Um, I, I kind of like the voiceover. It does cause me to have to spend a little bit more time with it. I have to edit the video, and then I have to come back and do the voiceover uh, once the editing is all done. So uh, if you'll let me know in the comments not only what you think of the box or if you have a question or a comment of something that's being done, uh, put those in, of course. But uh, if you'll let me know what you think of the voiceover with the video. If I find that most people like it, I may stick with it and just keep doing these. I, I, I don't mind doing them. I kind of enjoy them, in fact. It lets me think about, uh, you know, come back and think about what I was doing. Was this the best way or not. I've already split the lid off. I showed you that and what I'm doing here is the beginning of the shaping of the box itself. I'm not fully sure what I want but uh, I know that I want a rounded bottom and so that's what I'm working on at this moment. Moved up to the top here and what you see is kind of I don't know how I decided this, but I decided to do it this way, uh, make kind of a cauldron kind of a box, at least the base of it. Uh, I'm just smoothing out my curves here. I pretty well have an idea for the, the uh, top of it and how the lid will go, um, but I'm just making my, getting my curves nice and fair, making sure there's no flat spots, uh, no humps or bumps. Uh, a little bit of a sheer scrape right here just to make sure everything's smooth. Had a couple of lines there from my tool uh, where I didn't have the best tool control. But this shear scrape takes care of that in short order. We've moved around to the inside of the box, the body of the box. I've taken a, a light pass or two across the, the front side just to make sure it's flat and straight, ready to be turned, uh, ready to be hollowed out. And here I'm just taking the first couple of hollowing passes. I did a couple from outside to in uh, with uh, in grain work like, like boxes typically are. You tend to want to go from inside out. And so I've switched around here. I'm pulling out the, those shavings. You see shavings are coming out quite nice. In fact, I was getting uh, not just chips, but I was getting a few shavings with this as well. This piece of wood is extremely dry. I don't know how long I've had it. Um, I know I've been in this house for eight years, and I'm pretty sure I had it when I got here. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, it's eight years plus that I've had it. And... Uh, it's cutting quite nicely, actually. There's one little area that kind of runs from top to bottom where it's a little bit punky. But as you can see, it's spalted very nicely. Um, the little punky area, the really the only two places that gave me any trouble at all was in the very bottom as I was sanding. 
And then on the lid, on top of the lid, there was a little place where I had needed, uh, in both cases, in fact, I needed to add a little sanding sealer uh, as I was sanding just to stiffen that area up and to make it where it could be sanded. So there, I've, I've pretty well completed uh, the box part. Um, I'll have to come back to it here in a little bit and I'll show you why. But here I'm gonna, I'm gonna mount the lid and get started working on it. Looks a little bit ratty there. It was, uh, I did most of it, uh, the cutting off with the parting tool, but I did go over, uh, took it over and finished the last little bit, probably a half an inch on the bandsaw. Um, but it's it's not terrible bad. Nothing that a pass or two with the bowl gouge won't clean up in just a hurry. You can see there behind the tool that's coming out nice and smooth uh, just taking a nice easy little cut not hogging out anything starting to work on the edge i want to start working on fitting it uh, before i do much of anything else i want to fit this because it is going to be a inset box so uh, or an inset lid and so i want to get the fit on it uh, not there yet not even close I had tapered it, and so and I knew that the smallest part of the paper was, was still too big, so I go back, flatten the whole thing out to the, bring it down to the dimension of that small end of, the, of that chamfer, chamfer, get the word out in a second, and then I know I can do the same thing yet again. Starting to go in, not quite where we need it, but uh, was able to get started. And that was a good starting point for me. Going back to the uh, what's going to be the inside of the lid at this point. Making a cleaning pass, uh, and then thinking, well, I'm going to dome this. I'm going to you know, scoop out the inside just a little bit, make it a little bit of a dome. And then uh, this line appeared, and I thought, why don't I do something with that? I've seen a couple people do uh, something similar here recently. So I thought, let's just leave a button in here, uh, in the inside. And we'll do something with it here in just a minute. Ah, the Sorby Mini Texturing Tool. This is a tool I got just a little while back. I've used it a few times, but... Uh, not extens extensively, so I'm still learning with it. But what we see is, uh, what happens here is I put some texture on that little button. Um, when it's spinning, when the wood is spinning, you really, I can't tell what I got. But then when I stop it, I'm able to see that I've got this nice uh, spiral texture in there, fairly fine. And then I use some of this uh, teal, um, embellishing wax that I've, I picked up somewhere. It was on sale somewhere. And this happens to be a water-soluble uh, embellishing wax. It's kind of interesting stuff. But I put it uh, fairly carefully right there on that button, on that on top of the texture, or made sure it got down in the texture real good. And then we're going to buff it, uh, buff it back as far as it'll go. I had to take a second and wash my finger off. It was, had that stuff all over it. Anyway, we're gonna buff this back. Uh, try to get it just a little thinner. I think I would have liked if it had come off of the high spots and just been down into the texture, but it's uh, not only in the texture, it's on top of the texture as well. But you can still see the texture very, very well. That was going forward. I'm going to try going in reverse, see if that takes a little bit more of this uh, wax off. And it doesn't. So what I'm doing here is I'm reaching over behind me. I've got a little tub of water. Um, I'm going to put just, I mean, barely got a drop of water on that paper towel. 
not only was I seeing if some might wipe off, but also working some of that further down into the texture. There was still some texture that was uh, uh, exposed, uh, some of the, some raw wood down in the lower portions that were still exposed. So I wanted to make sure that wax is all the way down inside of there, uh, so everything was was looking good. We'll let that be that. And, um, that wax looks pretty good in my opinion. I, I like what I'm seeing. So we're going to go on from here. Do a little sanding. Show you here I'm starting with 100 grit. This wood, even though it's super dry, is still uh, cutting very, very nicely. I've worked my way all the way up, uh, not from the 100, went to uh, 150, then 240, now 320, uh, just to finish up. At 320 on this dry, spalted wood, uh, it's, it's just as smooth as it can be. Pretty amazing how smooth it is. And you see me sanding the edge. That turns out to be a mistake. I should not have sanded that. I had a pretty good fit. Uh, you'll see why I say it was a mistake here in a minute. Let's apply a little sanding sealer. This is my, my uh, thinned out sanding sealer. I used the Deft Lacquer Sanding Sealer, mixed 50-50 with, with uh, lacquer thinner. If by chance I run out of lacquer thinner, I use a bit of acetone, that works just as well. By applying it this way uh, with the paper towel, it's practically dry when I get done. I was a little afraid of the, the loose lacquer thinner on that wax part, so I pulled out my aerosol and sprayed that center section, and that worked uh, just a charm. Got the box back in the chuck now, and what I found was my lid was, was sloppy in there. Uh, it, it, would rest, it just rattled around. It was way too loose. And so what I'm doing is cutting the lip off, and I'm going to... Uh, make a new recess for my lid to sit in. And you'll see here in a minute, I'm able uh, with some fitting here again, the first time it doesn't even come close. Uh, I'll have to take two or three tries at this before I get that recess uh, big enough for that, that lid to fit down in. And I want it snug. It doesn't have to be super tight, but I want it snug because I need to turn the top of that lid. And this is the best way for me to do that for it to be snug in that box so that I can have full access to the lid. Using my half inch skew right there just to, I'm just barely taking a little tiny, tiny bit off uh, of the recess so that uh, I don't overdo it. Still too small. Let's go at it again. Again, that's my half inch Doug Thompson skew. Does an excellent job. Uh, uh, that's another fairly new tool, and I've come to really like that tool. I thought it would have limited use, but I've used it and used it and used it. And just really, really like it. Okay, let's try this fit again, see what happens. Ooh, are we fitting? Maybe we are. getting the, the grain lined up. I don't want it to be off. The grain be off and it fit. Come to find out that it's warped somehow. And, and so I want to get the, the grain right. Uh, so I've got it in the right direction. Everything's fitting. That's perfect right there. That would allow me to do what I need to do. So 
So let's slow the lathe down. Let's do a little sanding on this box. Let's get it finished so that when we do the lid, well, once, once the lid is done, it's done. Again, starting with 100 grit sandpaper. And I do have the uh, vacuum on. I went all the way through 320. I failed to show you the 320. But it's all sanded. We're adding a little lacquer thinner now. And this will get uh, the usual treatment that I use. Um, we'll use some, some Axe abrasive paste as well as some Axe polishing and restoring paste. Just showing you that it, this is the, the deft lacquer. It's the aerosol lacquer sanding sealer. If someone has a good uh, source for that, um, it's, it's hard to find right now. I ended up buying some directly from the company. Um, not sure how I ran across it, but they do sell direct. I'd love to be able to go to uh, one of the box stores or even one of the local hardware stores, but it's it has gotten very hard to find. And the only thing I can come up with is just not a lot of people using it. And so it's hard to, hard to keep supply out there when there's not much need for it or much call. But I'm coming back just like I do with my, my loose lacquer sanding sealer, wiping off the excess. That helps it dry a bit quicker. It also smooths it out. Um, I'm going to apply the Axe Abrasive Paste inside and out. I like to do this with the lathe off. Um, get it spread around good and even rub it in just a little bit. And what you'll see here in a minute is that I'll turn the lathe on at a fairly slow speed and just work that abrasive paste both inside and out. I want the abrasive that's in there to, to do its job. It does a pretty nice job. It, you can see the wood's already got a bit of a sheen to it. Uh, and we've not even done anything. We just, we've sanded, put lacquer sanding sealer on it and put the uh, abrasive paste on it. And it's already got a little bit of a shine. The abrasive here will start out at about 320 or 400, somewhere in that neighborhood. And it'll break down. It'll go all the way up to around a thousand does an excellent job um, most all your abrasive paste will do pretty much the same thing it's it's a matter of how much of what you want um, you want more abrasive do you want more uh, mineral oil do you want more beeswax uh, or something else that somebody may put in it um, you know different companies do use different formulas some add a little more some add a little less one thing or another so um, just experiment, get, get a can of one and use it for a little while, get a can of something else, use it for a little while. You know, use two or three, four of them, and see which one you like the best. That has cleaned up very, very well. Uh, my my preference is to continue working it, speeding up the lathe, changing to a clean piece of paper towel uh, until I get no residue on my paper towel. When, when, it, when my paper towel comes off of there clean, it's time to go to the polish restoring wax that you see here. The Axe Polishing and Restoring Wax is a Carnuba based wax. It also has beeswax and mineral oil in it. Uh, the mineral oil helps to soften the carnauba uh, and the beeswax, and they both, uh, the beeswax and the and the mineral oil carry the carnauba and help you to work that into the the uh, wood. Carnauba all by itself is very very hard, and so uh, by doing this application and and working it until it is uh, extremely dry, you have uh, worked out the mineral oil uh, and the beeswax. You're left with the Carnuba, which is an awfully nice um, wax finish. All the pieces that I have done with it, um, I like the way it feels. It feels soft in the hand. And that's kind of uh, what I'm looking for. I, when I finish a piece, I want it to feel soft in my hand. And uh, this finish does that for me. Unlike some of the polyurethanes and some of that, it's uh, 
Those feel plasticky. This still feels soft. You still feel some wood. Now, what I'm trying to do here, my lid is just, it's a touch too soft where I sanded that edge. It's a, it's a touch too small to go inside the box and stay there real well. And so what I'm doing is I'm adding, um, I thought two layers of paper towel. That was gonna be too much, it was too thick. So I went back to one, pa one layer of paper towel and it is in there quite well. It'll come out, but it's, uh, uh, it's in there very, very well. And you'll see here, I don't have any trouble with it. So now that it's in there, we're gonna turn the lathe on and we're gonna run that up. Um, I was just checking there to make sure it was good and straight, and it is. But now we can work on this lid uh, on the outside of the lid. The inside's done. The box inside and out is done, except for the tenon. You gotta do something with this lid. And so I'm turning the lid and just taking light cuts. I'm not trying to force anything. And right now, especially in the beginning, I'm working towards the headstock. Uh, I want my pressure to go that direction and not pull that lid out of the box. Here in a minute, I'll feel a bit more comfortable and I'll go across the face as you see right here. Uh, I've already done that some and I've I'm working, I'm leaving a, 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 a section right there in the center. That's going to be, I'm going to turn that into the knob. You'll see the knob on the on the top here in just a minute. I didn't really want a, a, a separate knob, and I, and I could have. I could have easily just uh, done this off fairly flat and drilled a hole and turned myself a knob and, and glued it on. But I really wanted one that was... It was part of the box. And so this entire box, the, the box body, the lid, and the knob are all one piece of wood um, separated only by that joint between the lid and the box. I'm changing over here from my bowl gouge to a uh, 3 8 Doug Thompson detail gouge. Now if Doug watches this video, he's going to be contacting me, I'm sure. What have you done to that gouge? Um, my grind on it is not what it ought to be right now. I still have to work on my, my grinder and make some jigs so that I have all the measurements proper for not only the bowl gouge, but for this detail gouge as well. I've got it, it's working very well, um, but the grind on it just is not what it ought to be. undercutting this knob. This lid is about 98% done. I've just got to get this knob completed. The very top side of the knob is concave. I thought about texturing and decided not to. Put a little chamfer, a, a downward, uh, out and down chamfer on the outer edge of the knob and undercut it as well. If I'd have had a second camera, you could have seen me undercut this, this knob, but I don't, and so you didn't get to see that. But just know that it is undercut. You'll see it in the, uh, the pictures at the very end. I was feeling there was the tear out. That's where that tear out has shown up in the lid. It's right up next to the knob. So I was able to cut most of it out. And what I couldn't cut out, I'll sand out here in just a moment. Here we go again. 100 grit to start off with. all the way up to 320. So it was 100, 150, 240, and 320 to finish out. I was reversing the lathe quite often, and uh, you see that, that big black cylindrical thing uh, uh, to the right of the screen. Uh, that's my vacuum, and it was running uh, even during this time. And you saw I was showing that I had had it going reverse. Now the lathe is going forward again, back toward me. And uh, so I, I was bouncing the direction back and forth uh, with every grit. So a lot of times I was going both ways with the grit. 
including the 320. I went in both directions uh, just to make sure I was getting everything I could get out including that little bit of tear out that was right next to the knob. So I am done sanding. <laughs> At least for the top part. <laughs> There's still the tenon on the other end to get to do. I'm not putting you through that. <laughs> I didn't even record it. Sanding sealer again. We have the abrasive paste yet again. By the way, I am not sponsored by anybody. Every product that you see me use, whether it's a tool, a sandpaper, a wax, a abrasive paste, a sealer, um, I've paid for every last one of them. I'm not sponsored by anybody. Um, if you are using another product that you like better, by all means, use that product. Uh, you don't have to use what I use just because just because I use it. Um, like I said, I'm not sponsoring it. I'm not advertising them. Um, now, could that change? Yeah, it could change, but uh, I don't see anybody calling me up and say, hey, if you'll use my product, I'm going to sponsor you by sending you my product. Um, when that happens, I'll let you know that too. Here's the uh, polishing paste wax. This is a wax. And if you use this product and you you think the shine is not quite what it ought to be, put on another coat. Uh, this will shine really nicely here. Um, I'm looking at it right now as I do this voiceover. And it's got a, a, a sheen to it, but it is not shiny. Uh, I may very well go back and, and put some on and buff it off by hand. Uh, just to bring up the shine a little bit more. Pretty well finished now. I'm going to stop the lathe, take it out of the chuck. There's that piece of paper towel. All that's left is a nicely trimmed disc. Locking my tail stock so that I can do this uh, without getting the second lever out. So there you have it. There's my submission to Lidded Box Week. Um, I'll show you here in just a second. The, the grain in the lid is, is uh, lining up very, very nicely. You see the shine that's on there. Like I said, if I put another coat of wax, uh, it's going to shine just like it is right now. It'll shine like that all the time. I do still have to take off the tenon. But I'll even show you that here in the stills in just a moment. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad you've come along and, and joined me on this journey as we make this box for hashtag Litted Box Week. Until we get to meet again, I hope you're able to spin them round. <laughs>